Okay, welcome to part three uh, of this tutorial series. In this video, we're basically going to carry on from where we left off with the um, login page. We just finished this is active function. Uh, I'm just going to quickly comment what it does. That's something I uh, didn't have time for in the last part. So what it does is checks if the given user account is active. Okay, so now we just need to go back to our login page and implement the check for this thing. <laughs> um, and like I said before, we are only going to do this check if um, the password and these other errors haven't happened. The reason for this is that it does a query and queries are slow, so we want to keep them to a minimum. Um, there is the mm, I did experiment with a way of doing the sort of combining this check with the valid credentials function but it just got so messy that it almost wasn't worth it um, so I just went with two queries here, two functions I don't know, they might be useful, separately useful anyway in like some of the uses but if you're particularly sort of, you know, you really want to be as efficient as possible then you can try and combine them into one sort of function, one query maybe validate login, that'd be a nice, well not nice, it'd be a good function anyway, what am I saying? Right, um, so here we are going to do the check for the account being active. So we're going to do if is active the username they entered, like so. And if that is false, we want to add something to the errors array. And that something is going to be um, this account has not yet been activated. So we'll spell account right and we'll click properly. Okay, there we go. Um, and like I said, we only want to do this if the other errors haven't happened. Um, and the way we do that is by adding the empty condition. So basically, if the errors array is still empty and the account isn't active, we show this error. If not, we just proceed to sort of checking if it's empty again, which is a bit odd, but oh well. <laughs> um, and then we sort of, you know, log in the user, blah, blah, blah. So that's the modification to the login page. So now we can go to our browser and test this out. Uh, what's the username? Let me just check this. Carl and Bob, right. So both of those users should be not active. So if I try and log in with Carl and the password wrong, you see we get the password can't be empty, which it was. So it can't. Um, and the username and password was incorrect. If we actually type the password test and hit enter, you see we get this message saying the, the account has not yet been activated. So that just shows that we're only doing this check if the other checks fail. So if we, well, now what we need to do is code the activation page. So if we go to our browser, just copy this link and paste it into our here. <laughs> You see, we get this message saying it's been activated, but it hasn't. Uh, for the reason for that, I will show you now. The activation page just has an empty PHP block and this message, which is shown all the time. So, what we need to do is create another function that will be called in this file um, if the account, uh, sorry, if the activation ID has been specified. Um, and that function is going to be called activate account. So, let's go back to the backend file. And just following um, this function, we're going to add a new function to activate the user's account. So let's just define it. So function activate account um, AID, because that was activation ID, what we've been using throughout. So we need to escape this because it comes from the user. So AID equals MySQL real escape string. AID, not AIDF. Okay, and then here we just need to do a very simple query using the MySQL query function. And that query is delete from user activations where um, active, oops, activation code is equal to a string, and that string is the AID variable. Okay, so that's that function defined and sort of coded. So let's just comment what it does. Let's say activates the account um, related to the given 
activation code. Bit wordy, but never mind. Um, so yeah, because remember that the fact that that row exists means that the account is um, not active yet. So by deleting it, we remove the data from the table, minimize data duplication and all that good stuff. So yeah. Right, so if we test this now, we can refresh this page, go to our table. No, we can't. I haven't coded the login page. So now we've defined this function, we need to go to our activate.php and gonna code. Well, first thing we need to do, as always, is include this live uh, sort of init file. Oops. So include core slash init dot ink dot php. I always do that. Never mind. Okay. So now we want to check if is set get aid, and if it is, we want to activate the user's account. Activate account get aid. Okay, so now we can reload our activation page by going here and hitting refresh. See, we get redirected to login. Um, what? What? <laughs> Hang on. That shouldn't have. That was odd. Oh, okay. I had some. Oh, right. Sorry. Okay, this brings me on to something that I should have mentioned earlier. Um, the init file. That's why I've got this open. Um, if you remember, recall, we defined this um, array of exceptions. This is like an array of pages that don't require a login. So we, need to, we just need to add activate to here. Like so. And then if we go back to our browser and paste the activation link in again, hit enter, you see we stay on the activation page. Less confusing. <laughs> um, and if we go to our table, we should see that yeah, the row for that user has disappeared. So you remember, Carl had user ID 2 and his code was sort of this. So in our table we have that code missing and user ID 2 is no longer in this table, which means that Carl's account is active. So we can click this link now and we should be able to log in with the user Carl and the password test. And we are. You are logged in as Carl. Okay, so that is I think pretty much the end of this tutorial. So um, just let me sort of try and talk while I'm checking if any I've forgotten anything, which I don't think I have. So um, yeah, that's that. Um, so here you go to, again to whoever asked for this, and hopefully you found some of it useful. And thank you for watching, as always.